grace, mercy, and peace is yours from the one whose mission is to turn the world right side around. Amen. Jesus is sending his disciples out into the world to announce the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. What we often fail to remember or even to learn is that for many, the coming of God's kingdom is not regarded as good news. For us, in our lives, in today's world, in this part of Wisconsin, the good news is that the COVID numbers are treading downward. The good news is that most of us don't know anyone who has contracted the coronavirus, let alone died from it. But that's not true for me. The good news is that we feel fine and healthy and we are more than ready for things to get back to how they used to be. We don't like living in limbo. We don't like putting our lives on hold. We don't like changing what we do and how we do it and when we do it. We want to go back to how everything used to be. We want to go back to normal. That would be good news, wouldn't it? For many of us, life was working. Maybe not perfectly, but well enough. After all, no matter how bad things got, we could always point to someone else and thank God that our lives were not that bad. Things were good enough for us, but things were not good enough for all. And that is never good enough for God. As much as many of us may yearn for life to return to normal, to go back to how it was, it is imperative that we recognize how such a return back to what was simply is not good enough. Through the worldwide protests, through the murder of yet one more unarmed person of color, through undeniable numbers that show that COVID is hitting hardest people of color, people on reservations, people who have less access to quality health care. Through all of this, we hear the cries that going back is not an option because simply continuing the reality of what has been racism and violence and inequities, that's not an acceptable option for the future. Jesus was born into a world of oppression and violence and inequality. It is vitally important that we remember that. Jesus was born into a world where leaders ruled by force and domination. King Herod terrorized families when he ordered his soldiers to pull babes and toddlers out of their mother's arms and slaughter them all. So afraid was King Herod of losing his power to another. So afraid was Herod of the newborn king, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Let us never forget that God sends Jesus into the world to save the world. God sends Jesus into the world to call out the injustice in the systems that we humans create and perpetuate. 
God sends Jesus into the world to change the world. That has been God's mission from the very beginning, to turn the world right side round. When God's people are oppressed as slaves, God hears their cries and sends Moses to lead God's people out of their oppression. And through Moses, God teaches them and God teaches us that the ways of the world are not the ways of God. The good news is that God brings justice. The good news is that God intends to turn the world right side round. And when God's people give in to greed and selfishness, God sends prophets to challenge the people and to proclaim God's resolve to turn the world right side round. Again and again, God's people fall short, turning inward rather than outward, limiting rather than expanding, thinking smaller rather than bigger. And so God sends the long-promised Messiah. Enter Jesus, now the adult Jesus in today's gospel reading. Enter Jesus offering good news for all. And indeed, those who have been pushed to the margins, those who have nothing to lose and everything to gain, those who have been beaten and battered and bruised by the powers that be, they come clamoring to Jesus. They come in crowds eager to hear this message of good news, eager to receive his gifts of grace and compassion and mercy, eager to embrace this vision of the world that God envisions. To the crowds, Jesus and the disciples and their message of this new kingdom based on love and mercy and forgiveness is very good news. To others, however, well, to others, Jesus and his misfit band of followers are regarded as a virus, a plague, a pox upon the land. These others will seek to crush Jesus and his message that they regard as bad news. They will insist upon maintaining and perpetuating what has been for their continuing benefit. They will seek to destroy Jesus, and they will seek to destroy God's vision for this world, but that vision persists. It cannot be destroyed. God persists. That vision for what God intends for all of humanity remains ever before us, and we are most definitely not there yet. The year 2020 is not the best that God envisions. And I'm not just talking about the pandemic and the slowdown and the economy. We live in a world where much is broken. We live in a nation where much needs to change. The good news of Jesus Christ is that all are created in the image of God, which means that all are valued, and all are respected, and all are loved. We're not there yet. As easy as it may be for many of us to convince ourselves that what, racism is no longer an issue, or that racism may be a problem there, but it's not a problem here, 
If we believe that lie, we fall into the, one of the biggest traps from which Jesus comes to save us. Our own arrogance and blindness and foolish pride. When we fall into that trap, we become like those devouring wolves Jesus warns us about. The wolves of this world are constantly working to divide us into the good and the bad, the right and the wrong, the worthy and the unworthy. Well, God's vision is to unite us through love and compassion. The harsh truth is that many in this world, many in our nation, have been intent on differentiating us from them. While well, Jesus keeps insisting that we find a way to see them as us, to see all of us as us. And when many of us are treated differently, even brutally, because of the color of our skin, that is not God's vision. And we need to work for change. Black lives matter. And when many of us live in daily fear over what others might do to us, that is not God's vision. And we need to work for change. Black lives matter. And when many of us do not have the same access to what we need to be safe and to be healthy and to provide for our families, well, that is not God's vision. And we need to work for change. Black lives matter. To do nothing changes nothing. To insist that life was better before, well, that discounts the trials and the challenges of the many. And that perpetuates the inequalities that simply must not continue. We must move forward. We must change for the sake of our life together that really needs to be life together, just as God envisions. So how do we begin this change? Well, listening is a great start. As Jesus responded with compassion, one of the most compassionate things we can do is to listen. Listen to people who have been afraid for far too long. Listen to those whose voices have been ignored for far too long. Listen to the stories of daily lives filled with ongoing struggles. Listen to those who seem most different from us. Listen and learn and grow more fully into the people Jesus calls us to be and sends us out to be. People who shine forth with love in all that we say and in all that we do with all people. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to give us a like and even a comment. And please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.